and Colombia and Argentina to make it to the World Cup finals. Brazil, ever present, of course, in the yellow and blue. Chile in their red and white, and they will kick us off and underway then, kicking from left to right in this first half. I'm told it's around about minus one degree and the temperatures are getting colder and colder. It'll be interesting, Dean, Silvio Petrescu, to name-check the referee there. It'll be interesting to see if Chelsea maintain this, if for Chelsea, if Chile maintain this high tempo, this pressing tempo they used against England that Jorge Sampaoli, the Argentine-born manager, has encouraged since he took over in the last year. Yeah, I mean, they'll certainly know that Brazil will be able to keep the ball a lot better than England did. But, yeah, that's certainly one thing they uh, they did so well the other night um, and counter-attacked so well as well with speed, with the likes of Sanchez up front. Great to see Sanchez and Neymar go head-to-head. -head. Claudio Bravo, in his 78th cap for Chile. Starting on the right-hand side, Fuenzalida wearing 22. But there will be a great deal of fluid movement between Vargas, who wears 11, and Sanchez, the number seven. There's Hulk, who really looked bright when he came on the centre St. Petersburg player. has 11 goals for club this season, scored against uh, Liverpool, home and away last season. Here's Sanchez, who was brilliant at Wembley and has been in such stunning form for Barcelona. And has ten goals in his last ten games for club and country, Sanchez. But they've got some way to go, Dean. 44 years ago tonight, scoring against Vasco. Pelé, 1,000 career goals. But you're envious of that sort of record. <laughs> I certainly am, yeah. I mean, what a, what a record to have, and one of the greatest we've ever seen. We've seen two of the greats tonight in Ibrahimovic and Ronaldo and, you know, two up-and-coming players in Sanchez and Neymar. You expect great football from both of these teams, but so close now to the World Cup, it's going to be interesting to see just how, how well Brazil play against a, a top side like Chile. Ronaldo and Portugal will be in Brazil, having seen off Sweden. 4-2 on aggregate, they won 3-2 away tonight, here's Sanchez will be there as well, looking for Fuenzalida, and the offside flag raised, he will get forward, the Colo Colo player, Fuenzalida, 28 years of age, came on against England for the last nine minutes, he's been uh, in and out of the side really, he didn't play in the World Cup qualifiers, though he was on the bench for their opening game, He had a major problem in qualifying early. They'd uh, lost against Argentina away and uh, beat Peru at home. They were due to play Uruguay and uh, one of the players had a baptism for his daughter. Uh, allegedly, reportedly, there was a drinking session and uh, several of the players were banned for uh, up to ten games. Jorge Valdivia's daughter it was. Back in the squad these days, Jean Beausajour, he had to sit out a few games. The Wigan player but they recover brilliantly. And it's all down to the effect of this uh, coach, I think, Sampaoli. You'll see him on the touchline. Shaven-headed. There he is, just got a glimpse of him. He'll, uh, in the dark tracksuit there, he'll be bouncing up and down the touchline. Here's Gary Medell. Defensive midfielder, really, Dean, playing captain play at centre-half. Has done so for Chile, but he's not the tallest, and... Uh, against this sort of talent in the Brazilian front line, he could struggle, maybe. Yeah, obviously playing holding midfielder for, for Cardiff as well, and I know... Oh, there's Neymar getting away from him and getting the first effort on goal. Just drifted away, and he's already in trouble. Yeah, I think would have surprised the keeper a little bit. Myself, I thought he was perhaps just going to take it under the crawl a bit longer. Super strike, and why not early on? A player in... Very good form for Barcelona as well. Real chance for him as well at Barcelona to step out of the shadow now that is Lionel Messi, that Messi's out of the side. 
Yeah, I mean, it's going to be really, really interesting to see which players step up, whether it be Sanchez or Neymar, but certainly Barcelona are going to look slightly different without Lionel Messi. Play back by Luis. Hooked away by Marco Gonzalez, one of the Brazilian base players at Flamengo. But he played very solidly at Wembley, 33-year-old. Luis. That's interesting. Uh, will this give him some discomfort? Because he played on the right-hand side of Dante on Friday. He's now playing on the left-hand side of Thiago Silva. Yeah, I know generally centre-halves really do like one side in particular and... I think most of the times I've seen David Luiz, he's played on the right. Obviously, Thiago Silva being captain, I'm sure. His first pick where he plays, but... be interesting to see how that pans out. Think of all the great Brazilian names of the past. Great Brazilian captains or wonderful talent, Garincha. Vava both got two in the World Cup semi-final win against Chile in 62, 4-2 it was. None of them lifted the trophy on Brazilian soil and Thiago Silva may have that chance come the summer. Here's Medell who's had such a startling effect down at Cardiff City. A record summer signing. Sanchez dropping deep as he is wont to do and he'll link up uh, from deep positions with Vargas, we saw them wandering around, exchanging positions. Luis Gustavo got a shot of him there, the uh, Wolfsburg place. Wolfsburg-based uh, defensive midfield player. And just a worry here for Nadal. If Holtz hit him, he's going to feel it. Uh, there's some power there. He's, his physique is so intimidating, Hulk. He's not quite six foot, but he's over 14 stone, which is fairly uncommon for an international striker. Yeah, I mean, you can just you can just tell by the way he's set. He's a solid-looking man, and with a name like that, you know, it fits perfectly with his physique. Marcelo Dia. And Bocajor will come on. There's Sampaoli. Diaz was the common denominator for Chile all the way through that England game. He stayed on. They took off Van Anguiz, who played well in the first half. That's offside. Yeah, I think, like you mentioned, Diaz, I think he was so influential in, in that game against England. Um, I think for both of these sides, I think that player, whether it be Diaz or Gustavo, are so, so important for these sides that like to interchange positions higher up the pitch to have that holding midfielder. Now I dropped short, lucky to stay on at Wembley. You may remember that. A bit of an attempted headbutt at one stage. Daft as a brush. Gutierrez with the header on, Felipe Gutierrez, he's the uh, Chile number nine. Away by Luis Gustavo. So 12 of the last 13 games now for Brazil. Very settled lineup now, it's a dangerous ball in. Hooked away by Gonzalez, Hulk. In went Luis Gustavo again, and Chile playing their way out. Such a tidy, neat footballing team. Sanchez is the brightest star in their firmament. And Gustavo covered back, covered ground and got that. We're definitely looking, Dean, at the starting holding midfield players. I can't see anyone, Liverpool's Lucas or anyone else, shifting Luis Gustavo and Paulinho now. I think that's it. No, like I said, I think for a team like Brazil, who likes to have the flair players, who interchange position, you've got to have that settled sort of three or four of the back two and the holding midfielder 
midfielders. So, so important to do that job. Can big Phil Scolari become the first man to return to a country after such a length? and win a World Cup for the second time. A bit cynical, the challenge on Vargas, who's been in magnificent form in terms of goal scoring for Chile over recent months. Eight in his last 11 internationals. Scored four in their last six World Cup qualifiers. Really came with a strong run. And five of their last six games in qualifying. Just touch back there. play Gonzalez looks for Sanchez drawing Luis out drawing a foul out of the Chelsea defender would you have liked to play against David Luis? I certainly would I think I would have felt like I'd have been given a perhaps a chance wait for a slip as you see here he's almost a bit too keen loves to come out with the ball and then leave space for centre forwards to create but there's no doubt in he's a, a superb footballer, especially on the ball, the sort of modern centre-half. Free kick to Brazil this time. Going against Gutierrez, plays in Holland with the FC20 club. And in fifth at the moment they are. And they get FA Cup action. Gateshead against Oxford United tomorrow, 7 o'clock. On BT1. Sanchez. Julio Cesar, what an interesting situation he's in at the moment. Can't get a game at Queen's Park Rangers for love and the money. Big year for him. Brazil look for Oscar. Just spun back there, didn't it, the ball as it landed? Yeah, I didn't think he, he realised how much time he had. He could have taken that down nicely and, and got his head up. Didn't quite see what I saw, but what a wonderful ball from David Luiz. Like we said, the modern centre-half that can pick out. 60 yard pass like that. Given away. Oscar threads it in. Here's a chance. Hulk! There's a late. 13 minutes gone. Given away cheaply by Chile. And Brazil punished them severely. 1 0. Such a soft goal for Chile to concede, to give it away. Such a dangerous area. And this is what top quality players do. As we see here, Gonzalez, they like to play out from the back. Oscar sees a pass early, and like his namesake, this finish was like the Hulk smashed into the back of the net. Great finish. There were five Brazilian players there hovering, ready like predators for the prey to make a mistake. There was the mistake. Oscar feeds Hulk, and it's 1 0. Yeah, that high press. A lot of teams are doing it now. Take nothing away. Sometimes there's nothing wrong with getting your foot behind the ball. Low and hard. Superb finish. He ended his long three-year run without a goal for his country at the weekend. And after 14 minutes, he puts Brazil 1-0 up with his eighth in total for his country. I was saying the other day, he's not the most popular with Brazilian fans back at home, but he's started 10 out of their last 13 games now. And Phil Scolari is gradually putting the pieces of his jigsaw into place. And Chile once again have been picked off. And suddenly when you see a team playing with such consummate ease against Chile, 
And you look back to England's performance on Friday night, and you really start to wonder. Yeah, again, another look at this great finish. But like you said, I think England certainly didn't press Chile like Brazil have so far. I think that's the difference. Certainly is a worry, though, for England when you see Brazil out playing Chile like they are in this first 15 minutes. I will say, though, uh, Chile played at Wembley after four or five days' preparation in England. Then they've had to travel to Canada, and they're very nearly on the end of a second one there. Hulk playing it in, looking for Neymar. It was brilliant against Honduras. The only thing his performance lacked was a goal. Five different scorers that night, and nearly a second tonight for Brazil. Yeah, certainly expects a bit better from himself, and we expected more. Great ball in from Hulk. No excuses, really. Great chance. All Brazil in the opening quarter of an hour. They lead 1-0 with a Hulk goal. Neymar will take the corner kick. Centre-halves are up. And he back though. Oscar, the stab ball into the box. Half cleared and launched by Joe. It's another corner kick. And his team are playing very well at the moment. Yeah, Chile really need to weather this storm. Brazil all over them at the moment. Just need to try and compose themselves. Arced away. And a free kick given. Little push by Thiago Silva. Again, here's that chance for Joe. Just snatched at it a little bit, if you compare that to Hulk's finish. A little bit snatchy. Haven't seen much of Joe in the last few years. Chance for him to cement his place in the Brazil squad. When you look at the player, Joe, who uh, scored five goals in his last eight internationals, and look back to those days he had at Manchester City. He was better at Everton, but you, you'd never see him blossoming as an international player, would you? Absolutely not, no. Sometimes, you know, players just don't fit with certain countries, I'm sure. You know, he's moved on elsewhere and obviously thrived, and, you know, you don't get in the Brazil team unless you're playing well. Chile not out of this yet, though. They've got some wily old campaigners, like Carmona, based at Atalanta in Italy. Harder than midfield, they've got Sanchez, they've got Vargas, who's got nine for a goal certainly this year. Here's Sanchez, and I'll wait on the right hand touchline. When Salida was the man wide on the right hand side, guarded by Maxwell of Paris Saint Germain. His title with them last year was his eighth in 11 years for different clubs. That's some run, isn't it? Here's Sanchez looking for Fuen Salida, and a gentle headed arm by Thiago Silva. himself available again if Medell wanted him the uh, Nottingham Forest right back it's away towards Eugenio Mena this is your out wide to the left hand side but the platform they built at Wembley through Alan Geese and Diaz missing tonight and also, let's not forget Chile without Arturo Vidal, the uh, Juventus player. Maybe one of the most, uh, the best 20 players in the world in 2013, earlier this year. Foul there by Michael Ambrosajor. He's out at the moment with an injury. Bits of a hamstring uh, in Serie A against Napoli. Big players missing for Chile. Can they get back into it here in the 20th minute? Bosch in the box, made a dummy run, it came to Medell, and his first touch let him down so badly. Well, it's obviously something they've worked on, because it worked perfectly. Brazil expecting the ball into the box, cut back, just to that awkward height as it bounces 
in front of him. Hara. Wenzelid has gone down that line. Sanchez with a typical run and the check back. That's a lovely ball floated in as well. And Vargas tries to get goal side, but pushed Thiago Silva. Free kick given away by the man based in Brazil. Plays for Grêmio. Been involved in the title race most of this season. Again, everything coming through. Alexi Sanchez, lovely ball, right idea. And you just see he's just giving him a little push in the back. Well done to the referee for spotting that one. A bit of a slow burner at international level, at club level. He's uh, always had great promise, Vargas. One to watch out for in the summer. For his manager, Sampaoli. Thinks a lot of the uh, 2011 South American Football of the Year, Vargas. Chile unbeaten in ten games. Brazil again threatening. Hulk coming in off the left-hand side on that occasion. And it's as bright and entertaining as it was when they met in April in a 2-2 draw in Belo Horizonte. Hulk to the near post, and away by Gonzalez. His goal separates the sides. And a long while since Chile beat Brazil back in August 2000. And they're going to make another substitution. When's the leader? I think he's being sacrificed here. And uh, Jorge Valdivia comes on. Pele, Valderrama, the great names of South American football once tipped this player to be one of the world's best it's never quite happened for him wearing number 10 in a classic number 10 as well the way he plays his football in the playmaking role but it's Brazil on the attack it's a strong run by Gustavo Sanchez very deep to pick it up Mike on with the tackle It's rather a little balletic spin, difficult for one so weighty. The way they spring, though, Brazil, when they do lose the ball. Again, great feat from Maicon, what we expect from him. Crowded out, Neymar. Carlos Carmona. And it's going to break here for Paulinho, who is stronger in the challenge, certainly, than uh, Medel. They just keep doing that, though, Brazil. One of the midfielders suddenly seems to just spring out of nowhere to close down either the centre-half or the full-back. Sanchez, there in the centre circle, he's playing very, very deep, isn't he? When they uh, brought Bosa-Jour on, couldn't work out originally where they intended to play him because he's no holding midfield player and I think they had to make the change because Fuenzalida and Bosajor and Sanchez, Vargas too many attacking players out there when you haven't got the ball No, and you want to give Sanchez the freedom to play if he's going to play a little bit deeper he needs the freedom that's where you need the players that are going to be disciplined behind him obviously wasn't working good managers change things when it's not working Neymar. We're in the famous Brazilian number 10. Hulk made a run to the box. To be fed. By an artful dodger of a number 11. In Oscar. Big games this weekend. Saturday, 11.30 in the morning. Join us for Everton against Liverpool. And then in the afternoon, 5.30, Bundesliga, Dortmund against Bayern Munich. And anyone stop Bayern Munich's march? 
Icon with the header away. Luis Gustavo. Took a little while to get going at Wolfsburg this season. Had a knee injury late in the summer. Brazil, flag up, raised against Joe. Is it just me, Dean, or has Joe bulked up since his days in the Premier League? Players as they age tend to put on a bit of weight, but uh, it seems to me that he's certainly happier than he was in the Premier League. Yeah, he seemed very lean, didn't he, when he was uh, playing in the Premier League? Obviously, very comfortable where he is now. He was 11 stone when he was in the Premier League. What was your, what was your playing weight? Do I, do I have to? Um, my playing weight was 15. Wow. But you still got around the pitch. But 11, 11 for a centre forward at 11 stone, that's too light, isn't it? Well, obviously, being six foot plus as well, like he is. That seems to be quite lightweight, maybe perhaps why he struggled in the Premier League. It's certainly very physical, the English game. Away by Oscar dropping very, very deep. Chile haven't got going, have they? They haven't been able to find their rhythm as they did against England, as they did in the closing weeks of qualifying. Trees simply kept coming against Paraguay and Bolivia, Iraq in a friendly, and in August they beat 6 0. Here's Vargas, a lovely step over there. Can they come back into it here, Chile? That's a corner kick. Well, that's what we saw against England. Great interplay, comfortable on the ball, moving it quickly, one touch. Again, Sanchez involved. Named in one uh, poll as the world's most promising player in 2011, ahead of Neymar. Beaujour, Gonzalez, Medel, Valdivia in there. Felipe Gutierrez with the corner kick. Disappointing from a man who has a big reputation as a big game player. Gutierrez. Here's a chance for Vargas with a cross. Steered away for another corner. Better, better now from Chile. Yeah, again, whether it's something they've, they've looked at, that's twice now they've got down the side of David Luiz, left centre-half side. Look so secure defensively in these friendlies since they lost in, in Switzerland in August. Gutierrez with the corner again. Swept away first time that by Mikon. He's come across to this near side to cover. Beaten to it. It's a dangerous cross, hammered into the middle. He's capable of that, Valdivia. Thiago Silva was well placed. Five clean sheets in a row for Brazil in their friendlies. Yeah, Mikon just getting caught. Strange cross. Striking it across. Good header in the end. Wiggins, Beauchajour. Gonzalez is in there. It's looped a long way, hung in the air a long way, and Luis can get it away. Julio Cesar, English based, it was an Englishman who took football to Brazil and organised the first matches there in 1894, Charles Miller. Here's Oscar, just tagged late by Medel, it was away from him, that'll be a yellow card perhaps, yes. From the Romanian referee. Well, he's had a fair few of those in his career. Yeah, I think he's renowned for tough tackling. I think he was favourite to get a red card in the Welsh derby. And you can see why with that tackle. 
the Chile Gattuso, one of his nicknames. The Pitbull, another one. Had a massive role in their qualifying campaign. Got a couple of goals as well against uh, Peru and Ecuador. Football of the Year in Chile in 2008. I think that's, you know, that's generally not frowned upon tackles like that where it's almost to save the team. In European and continental football, in England, we, we do frown upon tackles like that. Claudio Bravo, Real Sociedad, wants a two-man war. This could go in from Neymar, chooses not to have a go at goal. Get away. Oscar. They're playing at a comfortable pace. Brazil, their pace, dictating the tempo of everything. They're very, very much in charge here. Yeah, if you, you almost think for a second that Chile are letting them have this possession, but it's not like that. They're dictating the play, they're keeping the ball so well. They're knocked out of their last two World Cups in the round of 16 by Brazil, 2010 and 98. And this will be a, a word of warning for David Luiz. Yeah, I mean, that's twice now. He's been too eager, come through the back of the player. There's no need for him to really do that. Like I said, always going to give you something. I think that's the one flaw that he does have. Sanchez won the free kick. One of Chile's four survivors out there from the team beaten in South Africa by Brazil, 3-0. In the second round, the round of 16. Robinho was amongst the scorers that day for Brazil. He's on the bench again. That's a decent ball in for Bosa Jordan. Nice setup as well. And the shot spun away from Gutierrez, who was tumbling, but it was a lovely run in by Bosa Jordan. Yeah, it's certainly with, you know, with the strikers or sort of floating strikers they have, it certainly gives license to the wide players to cut in. Lovely move, and Chile really do seem to be settling into this match. Interesting, isn't it, Julio Cesar? We started to talk about it earlier on. Scolari's already said he's definitely going to the World Cup finals in the summer and he's only played two games this season both of them with Brazil this is the third can't get a game for QPR that can't go on for him he has to get away in January doesn't he yeah I wonder whether you know Scolari knows that he will get away in January you just wonder for him to say that but I, th I suppose goalkeeping's probably that one position that you could possibly get away with not not playing training well and still be involved but it's a big call from Scolari considering if he doesn't move he might not play all season Victor played in the game against Honduras and did okay in his uh, sixth international his first for a couple of years because Hara has to come on again from the touchline and uh, consternation, Jorge Sampaoli. Never had a, a chance to make it as a senior player, the Chile manager, born in Argentina, he played for New Orleans Old Boys youth team, but he broke a, a leg double break when he was a teenager and went into coaching. Vargas, good challenge on him. Oscar, nonchalant but brilliant pass forward. Joe, not such a good ball. 
Hawkeye to retrieve, and that allowed Mena to come in with a challenge. Or rather, it was Gonzalez, I think it was. It was Gustavo out wide. Maicon takes it again. Luis Gustavo, it's a lovely crossfield ball. Neymar. Dancing. A little bit of showboating in there, but he's forced the corner. Yeah, I mean, great for the crowd to see, great for us to see. Not great for the centre forward in the middle who wants a, a cross in. Joe awaits on the shoulder of the goalkeeper. Mykon's in there as well. Another corner. Aimed in at Joe. Part of this resurgent and very good Atletico Mineiro side who won the Copa Libertadores this year. They've got a hat trick in the quarter final and another one in the final against Olympia. 19 goals for Joe at club level this season. He's in there again. So too is Luis, little push. Great delivery though from Neymar, almost taking it like a free kick. Didn't see a lot wrong. The market value of uh, his opponents today, the Brazilian team, 224 million pounds. Luis. Nobody criticised in the UK, but he's uh, worth around about 35 million pounds on the uh, market. According to experts, he's uh, Michael trying to clear. I think this is certainly the best squad of players for Brazil we've seen for the last five or six years. Michael. Luis Gustavo. Quarters he turn. Sanchez unhappy. And that's a yellow card retrospectively for the Paulinho challenge. Such a strong box-to-box -box athlete. That's what I think where Brazil have changed a little bit over the last four or five years. They've always had uh, a Dunga-type midfield player, as you're better, Silva-type holding midfield player. But now, maybe it's just Phil Scolari's done this. They're much more mobile, aren't they, Paulinho and Luis Gustavo? They can get up more and back than the, than the, than the Dunga-type player would have done. Yeah, I mean, you, especially with Paulinho, you've seen for Tottenham getting himself into the box. Scored himself a goal this season, and I think as long as one of them is sitting at the right time, you want that player to be able to, to join in, get himself forward. Obviously, a ploy Scolari's really looked at to play them both in that position. Not quite a full house, there are empty seats around the Rogers Centre. Capacity for football around about 47,000, the home of the Toronto Blue Jays and the Toronto Argonauts. Neymar elusively slipping into space. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, it was Paulinho across there. Mena plays for Santos in Brazil. Not the Santos of uh, Pele days, or indeed recently of Neymar days. The uh, alleged drinking incident we were talking about, or celebration incident we were talking about earlier on. It's of a 10 game ban from his country, but I think he's brought back into it. 
before that, uh, I think there was some leniency in his case. Been in and out of the Wigan side this season, had some injury problems as well. Here's Luis. No great pressure on uh, Brazil. Chile allowing them to play out. Now they've got pressure, though. That's what surprised me. They did press England doggedly, didn't they? They did. It's just whether they feel that Brazil have got that real quality to sort of open them up if they if they commit too many men forward. Whereas with England, I feel they felt they could press high, win the ball, and counter attack. Carmona. Here's Medell. Karam. Vargas. Felipe Gutierrez. Carmona. One of the four that played against Brazil in South Africa three years ago. Sanchez. To Mena. Given away again. It's going to go all the way, Neymar, is he? Just veered out too wide. Again, there, a real chance for Neymar to show what he's all about. Again, a little bit disappointing. And while it stays at 1-0, Dean, Chile have the chance. They do, and they've looked a lot more comfortable the last 20 minutes, Chile. They have come into the game without really creating any chances. I think they'll be disappointed with that. Hara. Carmona. Tried to push the ball out quickly, couldn't get it away. And off goes Oscar, cruising on the ball. Lifted his eyes to see where the support lay. Here's Joe. No free kick given. His legs went from underneath him as he turned. Here's Vargas. And Chile getting the ball out to play so that Joe can get some treatment. I don't see a lot in that. I think he's turned himself into trouble. He hasn't looked too sharp for me, Joe. See why Manchester City bought him a lot of money, 18 million pounds back in 2008. But he had a, a track record at CSK Moscow in the previous couple of years, scoring 44 goals in 78 games. Won the league, won the cup, scored in the cup final. But he never really got going at Manchester City, and uh, a little bit brighter on loan at Everton. Flitted around in Europe at Galatasaray, and coming back to uh, Brazil. To international and kick started his career there, but it's really got going at Atletico Mineiro. And a good Confederations Cup. And I think it was there in the summer that Phil Scolari settled on eight, maybe even nine of his starting eleven. Yeah, I mean, obviously, with them not having to qualify, they haven't had the competitive matches, so that's where he would have got pretty much all of his feedback, really, in the Confederations Cup. But with the uh, World Cup just around the corner, there's no doubt that every single Brazilian player will be absolutely desperate to be in the squad. Here's Mena to Bocijor, Gutierrez. While they were out of competitive football, playing just friendlies, Brazil slipped to 22nd in the world rankings. Unbelievable for Brazil, that. Now, out comes Dario Bravo. Three minutes of stoppage time to play.
They've had more possession as the half has wended its way on, but Dean, they, they haven't created Chile. No, not at all. They've tried to get Sanchez on the ball. I think Gustavo and Paulinho have been really good in front of the defence. Vargas did well initially, looking there for Beausajour. Cross came Mike on. But whereas they seem to be able to get in behind England, they haven't really once got in behind that Brazilian defence. Sanchez. Vargas. And again, and into Beausajour. Just too much weight on the pass, and he was offside anyway. I'd perhaps just like to see Sanchez maybe a little bit further forward. You know, the way he took his goals against England, and he's in fine form. He needs to be in and around the box, really. At the moment, he's trying to create everything for Chile. He was at his best through the middle for Sampaoli and Var when they pushed Vargas out to the right-hand side at Wembley. Oscar. Out comes Bravo. Sanchez there again, deep. So who's up front? No one really. Gutierrez was away on the right hand side. Hulk. Just a slight tap. Settle for it. Not sufficient a tap to knock over a 14 stone player, I wouldn't have thought, but there you are. Here's Luis. Pointing up to be a fan, fantastic World Cup finals, a fascinating World Cup finals. Brazil roaring back to great form. Argentina, what a team that is. Germany, such a, a fine side, a resurgent Italy. Can Spain do it again? Conundrums and riddles. Sanchez. Very, very tight in there. Too tight, really, and here's Neymar drawing in the challenge and winning the free kick that should see out the half. Indeed, it does. Brazil leading. Not as comfortable as they might have hoped it would be. Scolari side ahead on 18 minutes through Hulk from a fine ball by player. Bags of potential. Been in Europe. Another great spell at uh, Vallecano in Spain. What's the that in Switzerland? No changes, and off we go. Brazil, of course, in the yellow and blue. And they're kicking from left to right in this second half. Thiago Silva plays it out. Oscar has found space willingly. And he finds Maicon. And the veteran Gonzalo steps out and ended up with a tumble. Oscar's played well in both games in this international break for Brazil. The concern I have for him, Dean, is that this is 119 games in 17 months at club and country level. That's for a, for a, for a boy. He's 22 years of age, still developing, and uh, it's a frightening amount of games. It is. You know, nowadays especially, it seems like players get rested, you try and manage the player, but to play that many games, at such a young age, you know, you worry that you know it could end in, in some sort of injury. So, but as you saw with with Messi and Ronaldo, they seem to to play every single game, and it seems to work for them. Averaging seven games a month. No, I think you know players want to play. You want to play every single match you can. And when you are a top player, the team want you to play every game. Mena down the line to Bosa Short, turning away from Mikon, drawing David Luiz out of the middle. He's still not quite got back Vargas. 
But interesting, as he committed himself there, immediately he had cover provided by Luis Gustavo, who slipped in alongside Thiago Silva. So obviously wary that David Luiz might go wandering, and they're prepared to cover. He just dropped straight back the, the number 17. Yeah, it's what great midfielders do. I think in recent times, Makaleli was the best at that. You know, so clever when he spot the centre half, just pull out. Suarez brilliantly done beyond Luis. Back in covering behind him again, he was there, Luis Gustavo. Yeah, it's that sort of unsung hero type type players. You know, they don't get much recognition, but for a manager, when you want a player to be disciplined in such a, a flair team, you know, it takes a lot of um, a lot of character, a lot of discipline to uh, to play them roles. Brazil will certainly start as many people's favourites to win the World Cup in their current form. Chile, though, have been stubborn in this game and they're still in it, very much still in it. They have players of sublime ability and in, in that I include Baldivia, who's had a terrific season with Palmeiras in Brazil. They're heading up back to the top flight. Carmona. Miguel on the way to Hara. Fans of European experience, of course, now. And here's a Felipe Gutierrez. Mena once again. A Santos base left back. Good touch off Vargas. That's Chile's best move of the game. Yeah, lovely interplay. And that's what it's going to be if they're going to get in behind this. Brazilian defence, quick football. First time we've seen Paulinho beaten like that. Great effort. Bent wide for the player on loan at Gremio in Brazil from uh, Napoli. The second to Neymar in the uh, vote for the South American Footballer of the Year a couple of years ago. Gutierrez pushed out wide, sensible enough defending. I think what's going to be really interesting about this World Cup is I think teams like Chile, Colombia, Uruguay, I think there's teams, Belgium, who I think are going to surprise a few teams and wouldn't surprise me if they do knock a few teams out. Here's Neymar, chance to build. And towards the edge of the box, Holt was there. He's released Maxwell across the box. And just turned up and over his own bar by Marco Gonzalez. Paulinho was in the middle, and Brazil were hungry for a second. Well, how important is that piece of defending from Gonzalez? Again, Neymar involved. Patient build up. Great ball across from Maxwell. And what a clearance that is from Gonzalez with Paulinho. Wanting to tap in at the back post. Up and over his own bar from the dogged defender. Actually born in Brazil, in Rio de Janeiro, moved to Santiago when he was a young puppet, just two years of age. Joe departs for Brazil. Not been his day. Robinho is the man coming on, given his chance to resurrect a, an international career that came to a halt in August of 2011, he scored against Germany, didn't play another game until the weekend, Brazil on the attack. Slice by Oscar, comes to Luiz. Ball watching going on there by the Chile defenders, there's enough of them back. Gutierrez got his foot on it, wasn't drawn in by Neymar, step over. Needs to get his foot in again there and does. Carmona keeps it in. Oh, that's risky, his Hulk. Maynard. Got a bit lucky there a couple of times. It was all a bit lackadaisical from, from Chile. You know, switching off on the set play. Not clearing their lines. Yes, you do want to 
play out when you can, but sometimes it just needs to go, set your defence again. When Phil Scolari first took the job, there were eyebrows raised amongst the Brazilian purists. I remember him saying famously, once the beautiful game is dead. And he turned the job down first time because he, he wasn't a believer that Brazil needed to win with panache always, that winning was the most important thing. And, of course, they won the 2002 World Cup Finals. He had a bit of a grisly reputation when he was a young coach. And quite fearsome. Are you, I mean, you would want to argue with him now, to be honest with you. He's a big fella. No, you can still tell he's very passionate, and I think it's a great appointment for such a big tournament for Brazil. You know, he's been there, he's done it, and, you know, there's going to be a lot of pressure on them to do well at the tournament. I think he's ideal for them. There'll be a few job changes around the world between now and next summer. Australia qualified in there, and then they had a couple of bad friendly results, booted their manager. Maynard with the header back, gets the return, needed to rush, and therefore the pass was rushed. It's come through there to Vargas. No question it was a foul. But he seems to be the one that's dropped into the hole a little bit deeper in the second half as Sanchez pushed on. Yeah, I mean, obviously I said that in the first half that would have liked to have seen that. I think that's definitely what's happened. But again, been so impressed with Gustavo and, and Paulinho in front of the back four. Made it so difficult for Chile. Last goes Gary Medell of Cardiff City. Gutierrez. The centre circle there, Jorge Valdivia, since he came on, I can only remember him touching the ball two or three times. Just has had no impact whatsoever now on the ball, but he was sluggish in getting there. Has a chance here to play. Referee waited to see if any advantage was to be gained. Free kick against Thiago Silva. And I think he was lucky to get that decision. Nothing wrong with that. In fact, it should have gone the other way I think that sort of sums up him as a player so far a little bit sluggish Beausajor played back by Gonzalez if they can get it if they can get a chance create something for Sanchez they can get back into this game strong challenge on it Neymar Runners to right and left. Robinho on the edge of the box. Took it wide and then there was no angle off the keeper corner ball. Oh, I thought he was just going to dink it. I thought he had that chance. Again, Gustavo, great challenge. Dario Bravo. Watching for runners. Luis Gustavo up from the back. Neymar thought about taking it short. Send the halves are up. Luis was in there, headed away. Oh, it's a great effort. Really exploded. Hulk got so much power behind the shot. Cracked against the woodwork. Unbelievable strike again from Hulk. So much power. Absolutely no chance for Bravo. And that was going straight in the top corner if it was two inches to the right. Really thundered by Hulk. And he made his debut against England back in uh, 2009 in Doha. Neymar. Medell is there with him. And he slips in the chance now. Paulinho up for the back, good save, and Oscar couldn't tap in the rebound. Gonzalez got it away. And look at Sanchez. Just look at the work rate. 
Got into dangerous territory there, though, and he's given it away. Got it back again. And he's given it away again in his frustration. Some of the Chile players look very, very heavy-legged. Yeah, you just wonder whether a lot of it would have been taken out against England. But they've just not looked sharp at all and given the ball away. Again, like you said earlier, that midfielder Paulinho, he's given licence to go forward if he wants. Again, a great strike and you just wonder what Brazil going to root miss chances like that from Oscar. Sanchez. Barcelona fans really seeing the best out of Sanchez now. The table toppers. He had his injury problems in his first season there. That's Carmona. No great pace about the game. Versus York. Mike on. Rubino trying to get away from his markers. There were three around him. Just thinking about Mike on there as he came forward. Remember the night where he was absolutely destroyed by um, Gareth Bale. Never saw him coming back from there. I mean, could win a World Cup medal that next time. He just seemed to have nowhere to go in football after that night. No, and he was such a star as well at the time. You know, the way he was playing for club and country, raiding down that right-hand side, and suddenly a young Gareth Bale absolutely exposed Mike on. Valdivy, I don't know whether he's not fit. He, 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 he was certainly a doubt for Fridays for uh, the weekend game at uh, Wembley. And uh, Matty Fernandez comes on. Now, he started at, at Wembley and went off. For me, Valdivy never looked right. He was never in the game really which is a disappointment because uh, I'm still a believer that he's got great talent but Fernandez on the field of play based at Fiorentina again a bit of an enigmatic player catching the under 20 side at the uh, 2005 World Cup finals of that age group as captain the senior side as well but, Faded in the World Cup qualifying, he was on the substitutes bench for the last six qualifiers. The 27-year-old midfield player can he spark something special for Chile? But Valdivia never looked uh, never looked really at the races. No, you just wonder whether he was fit because I can't remember one piece of play that he got involved in. And Chile need everyone involved if they, to get back in this game. Mena. Good spell of possession here, though, for Chile. Here he is already, Fernandez. Attacking midfield player. Medel. Vargas. Oscar dispossessed him. Too easily, really. And Hulk was dispossessed too easily. Beauchajor coming to a more central role to allow Mena to get forward. How much is the transatlantic flight taken out of Chile? Fernandez trying to link up again with Sanchez and kept it in. And a dangerous crossing as well. He's fouled his man. And a bright start on as a substitute. Again, you know, Brazil look a lot more solid defensively when, when they're out of possession. You know, the two fullbacks don't seem to be raiding on as much as I remember. And the two centre midfielders sit right back in when Chile got the ball. A lot more difficult to break down now, Brazil. Julian's going to come on. And Ramirez, too. Chelsea pairing about to be introduced. Yeah. 
Certainly, we've seen enough from Chile over these two friendly matches to suggest, as you were alluding to, that they could create a few shocks in the summer. You know, if they can get Fernandez playing, this was a from a South American uh, young player of the year, I seem to remember, Chile footballer of the year. He's had a great success uh, in his European ventures. Having a bad season with Fiorentina. They're fifth in the table at the moment, but at Villarreal he was very inconsistent. If they can get Valdivia fit, they certainly need Vidal back in the side. That's a good ball out by Beausajour. Hara. Carmona. Up to the edge of the box, Fernandez is forward, it's not yet cleared away, here he is. Launched over. Julian replaces uh, club mate, Oscar. Chelsea will be happy with that, big game coming up, big London derby coming up at the weekend. And Hulk will be replaced by Stamford Bridges Ramirez. He's the goal again. Yeah, confident from his goal the other night and took it so well, low and hard. So on comes Ramirez for his 40th cap. Didn't play in the summer in the Confederations Cup. Regular in uh, South Africa in 2010, but mainly from the bench. He only had the one start. That was against Chile. Julian came on against Honduras and scored his first international goal. Given away rather cheaply. Marinho nearly got that. Ramirez his first touch. Hara. Brazil thought they should have had a foul there for uh, Maxwell. Thought he was being held back or pulled back. Yeah, it's been frustrating for Sanchez. You just wonder with Chile how much pressure that's on Sanchez to perform. You know, he hasn't had a sniff tonight and Chile haven't quite looked as dangerous. Obviously got Vidal to come back. Marco Gonzalez. He had to react there too smartly. It was a poor ball back to him by Fernandez, and he swept him with his foot and was caught there by Robinho. Studs being shown from that sort of gesture from the referee. Yeah, I think the referee's got this right. I think he did go in, stood showing slightly, as we see. Yes. I mean, he's lucky not to have uh, not to have got a red for that. We've certainly seen red cards given for challenges like that, where you go in over the top with the studs. Manchester City fans would be amazed he was booked for a, a tackle. They didn't see too many from him in his days there. Came much vaunted, much hyped, didn't greatly deliver. Can Brazil deliver a second here that would surely clinch the game? But out to Neymar to take on Hara, isolated with him. Was he trying to pass to Rabini or trying to pass it into the net? I think he was trying to use the, the player as a shield and curl it round the player into the corner. There's a yellow card been brandished there. I don't know whether it was for Mena or Bosajor. 
Well, from that hangdog expression, it's the Wigan player who got the yellow card. And the Mark Mikon is at the far post, there was pushing and shoving. It's got very bitty now. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been pretty slow this second half. Obviously, it's for, for this challenge, the Bosa short. The yellow card brought it right back. But, yeah, it's just been so slow this second half. Chile looked tired, and Brazil aren't too worried about committing that many men forward. Often, this is the pattern of international break week when you've got two friendly fixtures. The first one is a lot more intense than the second because players are mindful they have to go back to their clubs. The first one might have taken it out of them. Yeah, there's still a long, hard season ahead for most of these players and they will have that in the back of their minds. Percy Jour, Wigan involved in European football, of course, this season. That's well played by Sanchez. They've got a chance here to get his men up. Sanchez has gone in the middle. Pending a feet on the edge of the penalty for Gutierrez. He's lifted it to Sanchez. There was a push. Maxwell exaggerated it, to be fair, but uh, there was a little shove. But again, the footwork from Sanchez is outstanding in the middle of the park. Clearly a push. I think a little bit frustrated with the service he's had. Not had a bad spell at club level. Maxwell, two titles at Ajax. Change of scenery, Inter, three titles there. Change of scenery, Barcelona, two titles there. Oh, let's go to France. Paris Saint-Germain, oh, yeah, title there. That's a free kick. Again, it's taken him a long while, Maxwell, to get his international chance. He's now played seven in a row. That's the name our foot raised on uh, Gary Medell. Not a bad honours list, though, for Maxwell. I'd have taken just one of those, would have been nice. Here's Carmona. Ramirez with the block. Mike on. Ramirez again. Very much the modern footballer, Ramirez. Terrific athletic prowess, can run all day long, as that gentleman is. Yeah, you see young players coming through now, and they're all immense athletes, and I think in today's game you have to be if you want to compete. International football tonight, FA Cup football though tomorrow at 7 o'clock. BT Sport 1, Gateshead, Oxford United. Vargas. Oh, it's a lovely effort, the goalkeeper didn't see it coming in Chile level. We've been saying they've got players of talent, Vargas, just one of them. And Brazil didn't put the game to bed. And Chile have come back and levelled. That's nine in 12 internationals for him now. Well, I mean, it's come from absolutely nothing. A long kick from Bravo and Bosa Shaw with a, with a header on. And what was wonderful about this finish from Vargas is he uses David Luiz as a shield and just shows him the eyes, curls it into the corner. Lovely, lovely finish. If you're Phil Scolari, are you happy at a centre half who turned his back on a shot? Without a doubt, no. He's given the, the keeper a problem, and not only that, he's not made a real attempt at, at blocking the shot. Take nothing away from Vargas, though, so clever with the finish.
I don't know if you, if you noticed, he just got a brief shot there of a, a, a wriggling backside leaping up and down, and that was the Chile coach, <laughs> Jorge Sampaoli, who came, came into the camera shot and was uh, celebrating like mad. He's a, an effervescent character, and that enthusiasm gets out to his players. He, it's a high-tempo game, they used at Wembley, now here they come again. Sanchez trying to slip it through to Vargas. What a year he's having. Four goals in the last six qualifiers, helped them get to Brazil 2040. And the title race in Brazil with Grêmio, third with two games to play. Well, we said, would Brazil rue their misses at this level? You know, you do have to take your chances against such quality opposition. That's a good ball to Mike on, though, by Ramirez. Here's a chance. Robinho was in the middle. Willian follows up. And Robinho stabs it in, and he's offside. Immediately, the Chile players appealed and looked to the assistant referee. We're going to have another substitution. Thiago Silva is going to go off, and uh, Tante is going to come on, the Bayern Munich defender. Luis gets the armband. Again, this is the first time we've seen Maicon get anywhere near the box. I mean, it's a clever finish from Neymar, but he has come back from sort of inside the goal. Just caught him offside, but Chile caught cold a little. Dante claimed one of the goals in the win against uh, Honduras, so it took a hefty deflection. But at some stage in the summer, he will be needed to uh, partner either Thiago Silva or Luis, who will be the starting pairing, I would imagine, for Brazil. Yellow car for Carmona. Been a lot of yellow cards from the referee. It hasn't been one of those matches I haven't felt that's needed it. Maybe the players giving him a little bit of verbal back that we can't see. Came back into the squad in February after 15 months out. Luis. The atmosphere's been stoked up as well. It was getting a little bit a little bit sleepy. Ramirez whips it in. Oh, the keeper spilt it. Needs to get there. Hasn't got there. Juggled up by Neymar. It's not yet clear it will be now. And Sanchez tidies up. Fernandez. Vargas. Chile have certainly stepped up their pace. This is more like their display of uh, last Friday night. Maybe they... I want to make a simple argument of it. Maybe jet lag did play an effect in the first half. I know... Marky Mackay at Cardiff will be concerned that uh, Gary Medell has flown all the way to Canada to go all the way back again. So to uh, Owen Corn, I would imagine, with Beausajour. Again, bravo. Not covering himself in glory. And again, it's great skill from Neymar, but you just wonder with Brazil, are they trying to score that perfect goal, perhaps like they did the other night against Honduras? You know, sometimes you've just got to take it early. They've been slightly wasteful in this match. These two managers have experienced different climates, not so much the difference between London and 
Toronto, but certainly Miami to Toronto, starting changing the temperature. And the countries will have that in the summer. Part of Brazil's planning is to experience this. A lot of their players, of course, these days based abroad and not at home. There's a 30 to 40 degree temperature drop between uh, the northern uh, city, cities like Recife and Natal and uh, Porto Alegre right down in the south. And countries will have to travel a lot. Brazil themselves know they're going to go from Sao Paulo, Central, Fortaleza in the top and back to uh, Brasilia for their group games. 2,400 miles of travelling at one of the countries, I think it's in their group, will have to travel something like 3,000 miles in flights. That's Neymar to the far post. Ramirez, Maicon. I think you're absolutely right when you when you say that about the temperature and, and the change. I think you know I've heard the England manager talk about how it could make or break their, their tournament where they play is such a difference. The sort of things that you know you sort of seem to forget about. Neymar trying to conjure, find a way through. Mike on. Brazil are ahead and Robinho from close range. Simple as that. Bravo caught out by the cross. Such a simple build-up. Effective, deadly. Brazil two. Chile one. Well, I've been saying Maicon's been as quiet as I've seen him and since they've since Chile equalised, he's suddenly getting himself forward and again. This is just far too easy. Bravo should go for the ball. There's no real men picking up for Chile and such a simple finish for Rubinho. It's what they've deserved, really, Brazil. Free header at the far post. The goalkeeping gaff. And Robinho. 27 international goals as he approaches 100 caps. Message there. Maybe to the Brazilian press. Question marks about his recall to the squad at 29. Ronaldinho also recalled earlier on in the uh, in the campaign of uh, friendlies building up to the next summer's finals. And it's a frenzied Brazilian media. I remember on the eve of the 1994 World Cup Finals as they come again and look for a game-clinching third. Robinho was nearly in there in the Pasadena a couple of days before the final they were training and uh, they were on the pitch training and there was a wall of about 40, 50 feet and uh, all the journalists were there and they were conducting interviews live on radio and television by throwing, they'd ask a question into the mobile phone, throw the phone down to a player, he'd answer it, he'd then throw the phone back up again, and the interviewer would ask a second question. It was bizarre to watch, but absolutely frenzied, and they a very, very harsh, pressurised environment they live in. Well, I mean, the standards that have been set by Brazil teams over the years, I think they're going to have that, and... I think it's going to be more than ever this year with it being in their country. I'm sure the nation will expect. And Chile come back into it. 2 2 it finished between the, club, the uh, two countries in uh, April. Fernandez with the free kick for Chile. A lot of bumping and barging going. He's going to have to stop it here, the referee. He does so and has a word. Uh, Sean Bochajor, I think, was involved as well. So having a word with uh, Ramirez and. Gutierrez, who's certainly not a cruiserweight. Ten stone dripping wet, I would think. 
Hernanes, I think that is, who's going to come on for Brazil. Matias Fernandes, cultured player, good player. Not a great free kick, but the pressure is still on. Back into the box by Vargas and away now. Robinho, buoyed by his goal. William on the outside. Neymar awaiting on the right. In here for Brazil's third. Parry by the keeper and squeezed away as Robinho came to finish it. Well, it's not been his night. They work it so well, picking the right pass. And he just seems to lose his balance at the last minute. And it's a good save from Bravo in the end. And Carmona made sure he's been solid, Carmona. Here comes Hernanes. And uh, Paulinho will go off to be replaced by the 28-year-old midfielder from Lazio. Most of his appearances these days for Brazil come from the bench. This is the sixth time this season he's come off the substitute's bench to take part. Likely to be a bench player in the summer. In comes the corner. Now, Chile up towards Gutierrez. That's decent enough defending by Luis on that occasion. Yeah, sometimes obviously we criticise, but there's times when he, he does look a world-class defender. Through towards Julio Cesar. Ooh, that's a bump of heads. Ramirez. Groggy. Mena. There you can see straight away. Innocent clash of heads. Brazil looking for a 13th win in 16 games. They lost two of their last 17. They lost surprisingly against Switzerland in August. Lost in London against uh, England, you remember. Both will have to come off the field of play. Chile defending an unbeaten run that goes back to March against Peru. Not since a 3-0 win at home in August of 2000 have they beaten Brazil. Both these countries used to a nomadic life for their international friendlies. Chile playing in a sixth country over the last three years and Brazil for really the last decade have travelled globally. And that's a free kick. For the Brazilian Globe Trotters. Ramirez pushed by Mena. Both players. Well, he, he certainly looks a little bit groggy still. Under five to go. Another substitution for Chile. Carlos Munoz going to come on for Gutierrez. Striker. And he's his football in the United Arab Emirates these days with Bani Yass and his name at Santiago Wanderers and Colo Colo. Only 24. Coming as a substitute against England too. Neymar with the free kick. Paul Sajour with the deflection away. Brazil in no hurry.
but Chile have proved that when this Brazilian side shuts off, switches off, they can be caught out. This is what's this has been their undoing in their Achilles heel in the last couple of World Cups. Many people thought after uh, Confederations Cup 2009 they would go on and win the World Cup in South Africa. It didn't happen. No, I think they've always been susceptible to, to leaking goals. They have looked they have looked solid tonight. I think you know it was a good goal from, from Chile. They have looked solid and you know all the all the wins they've had in, in the last year, you know, most of them games have scored two or more, and you can see why with the amount of chances that they've created tonight. I mean if they've taken half the chances, they'd have been way clear in this match. And I think you know they are gonna be the ones to beat in their own country next year. They're always likely to score, aren't they? They've scored 72 goals in the last 26 games, during which only Switzerland have held them at bay. That goes back uh, around about 15, 16 months now, that run. Age-wise, it's a balanced squad. Experience in there and squad peppered with four or five youngsters under 24. Here's Sanchez, who could be a glittering star of the World Cup finals. And Vargas, so could he. Put out by Maxwell and swept away. William. Oh, they got. A man over on the near side, and he went in tight. Ramirez went in narrow. Why didn't he come out wide to the right? And now Scolari's absolutely raging at his team to get back. Vargas stumbled and slipped as he played it in. Sanchez, that's a brilliant ball, and that's a great chance. I think the flag was raised anyway. It was. It wouldn't have counted. Munoz with the run in. Great vision though from Sanchez. Cracking delivery. Yeah, he's just straight off. Munoz. But again, that break from Brazil. You know, it's all about picking the right run and the right pass when you're on a counter attack. And as you saw, the wrong run can break the whole move down. Medell, Gonzalez, three minutes of stoppage time. And it's Gustavo, still winning tackles. Robinho, switches it. Maxwell, no pressure on it. William. Maxwell playing in place of the injured Marcelo. I've got a feeling though that uh, Phil Scolari trusts Maxwell's um, temperament more. Yeah, I think, I mean, we, we, we've hardly mentioned his name. You know, he's quietly gone about his business. Defensively, he's been solid. Just whether they want that bit more flair perhaps with Marcelo going forward. You never quite know what's going to happen with Marcelo, do you? He's swung into the box on the way through as he looks for Munoz in there. Although I thought he had a very good Confederations Cup, Marcelo. He uh, fantastic for his club over the years. Scolari saw the best out of him in the uh, Confederations Cup. The fullback, of course, who was highly rated by Maldini, and when Maldini reaches a fullback, that's not that's not bad praise. William, Enanas, Neymar. Oh, lovely vision. All oh, the keepers come out. 
Goes straight to Hernanes. Gonzalez with the block. Here's Maicon following it up. We've learned a few things about Claudio Bravo tonight as well, Dean. Such a strange decision to come out that far when his defence had it covered. That's a good ball in by Luis Gustavo, but Ramirez fouled his man. Bit eccentric, the goalkeeper, unorthodox, certainly, very athletic, but uh, you never know quite what's going to happen with him. Here comes Liverpool's Lucas. Neymar departs. A substitution, I would imagine, to get a reaction from the crowd. He's yeah, certainly been, been involved a lot. Neymar perhaps not hit the heights that everyone expects of him. Missed a few chances. But you can certainly see that he's going to be one of the stars of the World Cup. I thought he was sensational in the summer in the Confederations Cup. Four goals there and five in nine internationals in his last nine. Lucas is on. Robinho, Willian and Ramirez. Brazil's front three now. And here they come again. And Ramirez drawing away from his man. Could have done, he could have left it. Lucas was in there in support, the shot lacked any sort of power, that's a wretched clearance. And a poor ball by Mikon, and there are tired players out there now at the end of this, uh, this jet-setting week for them. And there'll be a fair few club managers around the world tut-tutting. In towards Robinho, lovely, lifted it over the defender, oh, it would have been brilliant. It would have been an exquisite way to finish the game. And Scolari doesn't want any of it, he's saying get back, defend, hold on to the 2-1. Wonderful to see though, unbelievable skill from Rubinho to end this match. Brazil were pushed, they led, Chile came back at them, but the victory is Phil Scolari's and Brazil, and the run continues for them with Robinho's winner.